Okay, this video is potentially going to be quite long. I urge you all to prepare yourself, maybe go get a drink, get some snacks, maybe even run a bath and get ready to listen to the dulcet tones of my voice talk to you about shoes. This week I put the, um, the feelers out on Instagram basically asking if a video on like investment purchases would be helpful um, because I wasn't going to vlog this week, I haven't vlogged this week, haven't really been in the correct headspace to do so, but I still wanted to create something to go up on Sunday. Now this kind of idea has been brewing for quite a few months now, it's been something I've wanted to do in a video format for quite a while. Those of you who followed me from like blogging days will remember that I used to do this series in which I would kind of review five things that I'd invested in that season or like that half of the year and do an honest review on them and I really enjoyed it and always had such great feedback from it and it's something I wanted to kind of revive again but in video format so I put a little thing out on Instagram just saying would people be interested and it was a big resounding yes many people were just like yep yeah, go for it but originally I wanted to do the video in just one video where I would talk about maybe like seven pieces that were great buys and three pieces that weren't and then when I got lots of feedback on Instagram I realised that actually people wanted a lot more categories covered so I think the plan is that going forward I would really like to do two videos a week one being a vlog and the other being a kind of fashion related video starting with this series this kind of like investment series so depending on how this video goes hopefully there'll be one a week where i will do it in categories basically without further ado my first video of the series is going to be shoes so basically what i will do is i will talk about shoes that i have invested in and whether they were good or whether they're bad it's kind of like an honest review of basically some of my best and some of my worst purchases. Now, I just want to clear a few things up because I had a few people just say that they can't afford to buy high-end designer pieces so they're not sure how useful this video will be. I am using the term investment quite loosely. I don't mean investment in terms of just high-end designer pieces. I use the word investment because anything I buy is an investment regardless of the price, the brand, I'm buying to invest, I'm never buying with the intention to get rid of something or I'm never buying with the thought that oh I'll get rid of that in a few months or that won't last me. Everything I buy is an investment because I want it to work hard in my wardrobe. So within these videos I will cover a kind of quite a broad range of price points and brands, it won't just be high-end designer. This video in particular will feature a lot of designer pieces but that is because I have a bad shoe problem but there are some there are varying price points within here I am going to talk about um, Dr Martens and also talk about the 80s boots along with like Chanel sandals all the sun has just come out and blinded me what I'm saying is that there will be a variation of prices and brands not just high-end so what I will do is I will split it into kind of like good, bad and just downright horrendous and then within that I will, I've written some notes here so that I don't go off piste, I will then basically say what the shoe is, the price, when I purchased it, why I felt compelled to purchase it, the comfort, styling ease, so how easy or difficult I found to style, the longevity of the shoe in both the quality and whether I think it will surpass trends, whether it's something I think I'll keep wearing and then the quality versus the price. So, the most highly requested shoe to talk about was both shoes that I have from the row. So I'm gonna start off with those because actually all three of them fall in the good category. I've just been sat here and realized you can see the that thing there is the stick that we use to open the Velux. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Sorry, that was really distracting me. Right, focus. Okay, first up is the Row Ginza flip-flop. I am sure many of you will be sick to the back teeth of seeing these shoes on Instagram at the moment. I have them in two styles. So, sorry, I was just taking them out of the dust bag. I've got the black, they could do with the clean actually, the all black leather. So we've got a black, black upper and black, not black, sorry, leather upper, 
and leather sole. And then hidden, no, wrong ones. Hidden in a box because 99% of my shoes stay in their boxes. Trainers don't, but most shoes do. Stay in their boxes and their dust bag. We have the white with the suede. So two different styles and two different price points. I bought these for 1050 Australian dollars. So I bought them when I was in Australia from matches.com. At the time, I'm not sure what the exchange rate was, but right now, as the exchange rate stands, I paid 600 pounds for them. But I've got a funny feeling it was a little bit closer to 650 back then, because this was in January. So let's say, let's just for the purposes of this, let's say I paid um, like 625 for them. These I ordered through directly through the Rose website and paid 725 for them. So there was a hundred pound difference between the two, basically. Bought these in January because basically I had seen Lucy Williams wearing them for like the whole of last summer. And every time she posted them, I was like, I really, really like those sandals. And had kind of just had them on my radar for a while and then was like, yeah, I'm gonna purchase them. And then when I actually went to purchase them, they were obviously sold out. That seems to be the general pattern with me. I will um and ah for quite a while and then when I go to actually make the purchase, most of the time they're sold out. So when I was looking through the Matches website for them, I actually found this style, which is different to the style that I was looking for. What I was looking for was this style in all black. So this style has a suede bit around the border. This style, this is all completely leather and it has uh, some contrast stitching and then this is leather as well. So I thought to myself, I don't wanna make the same mistake and miss out on these. So I ordered them and decided to order a half size down and I'm glad I did because I'm normally a 38, but based on the Gaia shoes, which I already had and had to size down in, I decided to size down in these by half a size, and I'm glad I did. Comfort. Two very different shoes, I'd say. This style, heavier than this one. These are quite light. This feels a bit more weighty. I did experience some discomfort when first wearing these, and I kind of preempted it because I'd spoken to Lucy and she was like, yeah, they are quite painful. And it's this piece of leather here. It's, it's very thick and it's robust. I mean, it has to be really to kind of like take the weight of the shoe. But because it's so stiff when you first wear them, that really cut in in between my toes. Also, because this, this leather needed breaking in a bit as well, the actual kind of like edges would rub on the top of my foot. I would say for about a week or two, especially from this fit, I had some pretty excruciating blisters on my feet. I feel like, I don't know if it's just my feet, but I have a hard time breaking in shoes in general. These, however, hard to judge because I haven't actually managed to do much mileage in them yet. I bought these in May because it was my birthday. So I haven't really had the chance to walk that far in them. I think the furthest I've walked is like the shop at the end of our road. So I've been wearing them around a house a lot have found them to be slightly more comfortable than the black version because because these are heavier there is like a little bit of a strain on your toes because you're kind of like trying to lift a heavier shoe like i know how to walk in a flip-flop you know i spend most of my days walking around the house in javianas so when i ordered these i was like oh these would be fine easy to walk in and it was like learning to walk in a flip-flop all over again i was like this is really weird like because they're heavier and also this is very you know that's a solid sole you're like this doesn't really I mean no it doesn't really bend much so you kind of feel it's weird at first basically you're kind of learning to walk in a new style of shoe well I was anyway because I'm so used to like Birkenstocks, Havianas, uh, trainers so they were a bit odd at first however these feel easier and I think it's because they're lighter 
there's not as much strain on the front of my foot trying to like lift them up when I walk and these feel like they're bending a bit more and these feel a lot more cushioned like this whole surrounding area and the sole is way more cushioned whereas this like that's solid styling wise I have found them exceptionally easy to style I don't like that sweeping statement of you can wear them with anything but literally like these do go with everything I particularly like them with like a pair of slouchy trousers or some slouchy denim and a cami or a tank obviously fantastic with like long dresses big floaty dresses and also here in the UK we are kind of in this sweet spot where you can get away with wearing a jumper and sandals it doesn't last very long doesn't come around very often but it is such a good little spot the other day I styled these with a pair of navy tailored trousers and a navy jumper like an oversized navy jumper looked really good so yeah found them really easy to style like I said when I ordered the black pair I was in Australia at the time so pretty much wore them with everything and anything these ones really easy to wear as well but because of the kind of slightly 90s early noughties girl band vibe that they give off if you're not careful when styling them you can look like a member of all saints or you know like a band <laughs> band like that longevity in terms of quality no i'll do longevity in terms of like surpassing trends and then continuing to wear them first so i feel like i'm getting to an age now or like as i get older i just it's not that I'm falling out of love with clothes, it's just that I kind of can't be bothered to overthink it too much. I just want to kind of know what my style is, know what works for me and be able to pick out things in the shops or when I'm shopping easily and just be like, yeah, that's going to work for me. And I just don't want to have to, you know, I've been through so many phases where I've experimented and things haven't felt right and I look back and I'm like, why did I wear that? That didn't make me feel good. And when I put these on, I feel so good in them. Like, so, so good in them. I love them so much. I just think they look so nice. They make me feel really nice and I feel very confident in them. And I think because they, because I have managed to style them with pretty much everything in my wardrobe so easily, I know these are going to be a piece that just keeps going and going because... I'm kind of at a place now where I don't think my style will change too much. It might get a little bit more basic, a little more, even more pared back, but I don't think I'll stray too far from how I dress now in the future. Um, that's not to say I won't ever experiment with things ever again. Obviously I will, but I'm just at this place now where I'm very happy with how I'm dressing, like really, really happy. And these slot in very nicely with that happiness and with my wardrobe. They, both of them do feel beautiful, beautifully crafted. The leather is lovely on them. These, I mean, these feel like a solid, indestructible flip-flop. These, however, because they're suede on the outer here, they do need maintenance. They do require some care, which is fine. Like, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. I always take good care of things as much as I can but suede can be a real pain sometimes I mean I've only really worn these around the house and to the shop down the road a few times and they have required like a good old brushing over also they are white leather and as beautiful as white leather is as soon as it starts to get dirty it looks really gross I'm having to clean them quite regularly which again is fine like when I got my acne masubi bag I washed that thing like weekly I did not want it to get dirty at all I don't know if you can see they starting to get a bit discolored obviously where my foot is you can see some like grayish looking toe marks so in terms of like how these will age I don't think these will age quite as well as these ones if these were black yeah fine but it's that it's that white leather and the suede that I'm like I don't know how these will look in a year's time versus I think in a year's time these will pretty much still look the same um quality versus price now my honest opinion of the row is that it's far too overpriced for what it is I you are purely paying for a name I mean no you are getting a beautifully crafted excuse me you are getting a beautifully crafted item 
there is no denying that the the quality is beautiful but i do draw the line with some of their pricing because it is just eye-wateringly expensive it is like double the, i mean it's more expensive than like well maybe it's like on par with like some chanel prices but you're just like how can something cost that much money i mean 725 for these i don't i'm not on board with that 600 for these i'm like okay that's more in line with some other high-end design pieces but it's still a lot of money for a pair of flip-flops essentially that you are only really going to wear for one season a year there are however a lot of alternatives out there now this style of shoe it like if it if it's the chunky flip-flop that you're interested in so many good alternatives out there at the moment that i will link below if it's more because of the brand and because for me a lot of the devil is in the detail with things like this so when i saw these i was like i want this specific style i don't want an alternative i want these specific ones i get very i have like tunnel vision and i'm like nope i don't want an alternative i want that one that i saw because uh for example for me it's the stitching or like on this it's the suede outer so <sighs> i don't know i guess it's just how you feel about spending that much money on something versus how much you think you wear it and that kind of thing um so yeah there, there's lots of good alternatives out there okay up next is the Gaia sandal also from the row these are a whopping 900 pounds we will talk about the price later but yeah 900 pounds i ordered these in september last year so a bit of a funny time to be ordering a sandal in the uk just as the summer is ending and the autumn is beginning but it was kind of one of a similar to the ginza sandals i saw them and i was just thinking i ain't gonna find anything else like those i want those went down a whole size by the way just in case you are wondering comfort wise they are comfortable yeah i've had no problems with them whatsoever in terms of like blistering or anything painful they've been fine really really good they're just a bit heavy and it takes some getting used to similar to the ginza sandals this this is solid like this is a solid shoe like that is a it's a weighty shoe so when i first put them on i was just like oh these are odd these are very odd i can't it just they felt weird to walk in basically and there's not yeah there's no bend in that i can hand on heart say i've had no issues with these comfort wise whatsoever with socks on with socks off fine really really good styling so like i said when i first ordered them we were about to go into autumn and when i ordered them as they were on their way to me i had all these great envisions in my head of how i was going to style them and then when they arrived i just my mind went blank i was like i don't know how to wear them i don't i don't get it why can't i wear them they don't look good with anything and i think it was because it was just the wrong season i'd been envisioning them with like all these great sort of like late summer outfits and i'd missed the boat basically and ended up wearing them with socks trousers jumpers and blazers which was fine they looked all right but i felt like i was very limited as to how i could style them so sadly they did spend a lot of time in their box until january when we went away to australia if you've watched the australia vlogs you will have seen these make many appearance they really really came into their own in summer it was like they had a new lease of life and i wore them with everything i wore them so much i still wear i i'm speaking like i don't wear them anymore i obviously still do i wear them so much um if i'm not wearing the ginza flip-flops i'm wearing the gaia sandals they're just they're very unique and i really like how they can offset a, a really simple outfit i love how they can balance out a kind of like big floaty dress that's one of my favorite ways to wear them 
um, I've got this really beautiful big white puffy sleeves dress from a designer called uh, Sophie Dore and I love it paired with these shoes I love anything that's kind of like a bit sort of big and flouncy paired with these really really nice way to wear them so yeah styling wise just be a bit mindful that like <laughs> they're not the best for winter but I will be interested to see how I tackle them as we go into autumn whether I will like I will try wear them with socks and like I said we're in that that sweet spot where you can wear a jumper and sandals it's great but yeah just had a bit of a funny time with them had, had some teething problems longevity it's really hard to say with these because they are a style of shoe that I haven't necessarily tried before I mean it's essentially a gladiator sandal like a low it's kind of like a mix between a sort of granddad sandal gladiator I mean it's really or toddler sandal as I saw Monique call them the other day I was like please don't call them a toddler sandal because I feel like I invest in too many childlike shoes so it, yeah it's hard to judge how I will feel about these in a year but based on the styles of sandals that I gravitate towards normally and have gravitated towards in the past I do feel like this is a sandal that I've kind of imagined in my head for so long but haven't known where to find it and then all of a sudden this summer it was made. Longevity surpassing the trends I think it's one to watch for sure. Longevity in terms of quality now like I said they're a hefty shoe they're beautiful though they are absolutely beautiful like every time I get them out of the box I'm just like <gasps> they're so gorgeous and I remember the first time I because especially with shoes like I love shoes so so much that I get quite like strong connections to them and like I properly like become infatuated with shoes and when something is so beautifully crafted that it takes my breath away like that was how I felt when I first saw these I went to the the row concession in Dover Street Market and I saw them and I think I actually gasped because they are so beautiful in my eyes they are beautiful I just was like I can't I just I was looking at all the stitching and just everything and I was like they are just gorgeous I really need to stop like pouring my heart over these shoes so in terms of longevity and quality I do think these will last quality versus price they are not worth £900, they are far too expensive for what they are. However, if I compare these to say like the Chanel Dad sandals which are 1000 or maybe 1100 if you buy them brand new, don't quote me on that, the price of those shoes fluctuates quite a lot, these would, these surpass them by miles these are these feel like if I if I compare the two the Ch a Chanel sandal and these these feel more reflective of their price than the Chanel sandals and based on how much I've worn them and how they still look beautiful I mean yeah I keep them in a dust bag but a dust bag doesn't stop them from aging if you wear them so you know although I'm looking after them and they're still going to get some wear and tear but they still look great. They still look so, so good. I mean, I've been traipsing around Australia in these, like through rainforests and the beach, and they still look great. So in terms of like the quality versus price, like the quality is really, really good. Like so much better than other shoes that are the same price. That's what I'm trying to say. They're not worth 900 pounds. I don't think any shoe is really worth 900 pounds, but in comparison to other shoes in that price bracket these are way way better um very unique style i've seen some similar but i've seen nothing close and that is why for me i justified it because i couldn't see anything that was close enough to this so there we have my three pairs of the row shoes that is probably going to be the longest feel because i feel like i had a lot to say about them because they are expensive shoes but this segues nicely on to the Chanel sandal. Okay, when and why? So I first bought these in August of 2018. Is that why I wrote down? Yeah, August of 2018. And I had seen them 
literally everywhere on Instagram. You couldn't move for them. They were continuously being posted. I, however, could not find them for love nor money anywhere to actually buy or try on. I went to several Chanel boutiques, couldn't find them anywhere and couldn't find them on Bestiaire because I guess they were brand new so they weren't really being sold second hand at the time. So I enlisted the help of a personal shopper who helps track down hard to find designer items and they managed to track them down um, in a pretty speedy time. However, I was in a little bit of denial that they actually fit because they didn't. They were too big, but because I had them and had spent so much money on them, I was like, right, I'm gonna keep them and just wear them. And looking back on photos now, I'm like, they were far too big. They made my feet look massive. And I think it wasn't until I kind of saw someone else in them in real life, I was like, hmm, mine are too big. I should probably have got the correct size. So I decided to begin the hunt again and try and find my actual size. So I sold the original pair on Vestia Collective and then found my correct size on Vestia Collective also. So when I ordered them, so when I bought them through the personal shopper, I'm pretty sure I paid just over a thousand pounds for them, I think. And then on Vestia Collective, I bought them for 800 pounds. Bear in mind when I bought them on Vestia Collective, they were also brand new. So I think to buy them from a Chanel boutique, they're roughly around £1,100. The prices of them really varies between different countries and different styles because there's so many different variations of this sandal now. So this pair that I have in my hand and that you see me wearing on Instagram now is from Vestia Collective. Comfort. Right, so I have had some issues with these sandals. They're sweaty. Do you know what I mean by that? They make my feet sweaty and I don't know why because they're a sandal but my feet get really sweaty in them and then they feel uncomfortable and squeaky. So that's um, my number one discomfort about them that just really bugs me and it's just embarrassing isn't it when you're walking around and you can hear your shoes squeaking. Secondly, so they're velcro and there's a bit here, I don't know if you can see that. There's just this like little nubbin of leather that rubs so much. It doesn't anymore, but when I first wore them for about like the first month, that really caused me some jip, some real bad blisters. Two kind of red flags, like, you know, not really what I'd expect of a shoe from this brand, this price. But to walk in genuinely, they are quite comfortable. In terms of styling, they're also very easy to style, I'll be honest. I am, I've always gravitated towards a more kind of like chunky dad style sandal anyway. So I really like wearing this style of sandal. I like the juxtaposition of them with dresses and jeans. You know, I like that kind of balance that it gives to lots of outfits. So for me, they have been easy, but I can see why they would be a bit like Marmite for people. There have been, I mean, there have been times I've put them on with things and I've been like, oh, is this a little bit too much? Like, they are of a very certain aesthetic, aren't they? They are that chunky, slightly awkward dad sandal. And if you pair them with kind of awkward clothes as well, <laughs> it's like you've gone for the full shebang. But as a whole, fine good good to go in terms of styling longevity so i'll do longevity in terms of surpassing the trends first so like i said i bought these in 2018 and i'm still wearing them now which i think says a lot more about me and my character than it does about the shoe i think it's more because i know most of the time when it comes to sandals, I know what I like. And as I just said, I gravitate towards more towards more towards a chunky shoe. Even before I bought these, I was wearing chunky sandals in the summer. So it is a style that I will continue to keep wearing. I'm still wearing now and do imagine I will continue to wear. Longevity in terms of the quality though, I don't think they wear in particularly well. I am not impressed with the quality of the shoe versus the price at all you know like to buy these brand new to spend four figures on a pair of shoes and receive this quality of shoe 
when I compare it to the Rogue Gaia sandals, like I was just saying when talking about the, the Gaia sandals, I would just be annoyed. Well, I am annoyed, but <laughs> um, it's just not there. Like, the leather just feels a little bit like, it's kind of like a bit shiny. I mean, I know it's it, this is the... Um, the leather that Chanel uses, it's like the leather that they use on their handbags, I get it, I'm familiar with it, but it's just not reflective of the price, I just don't think the quality is quite there with them. Some of the stitching on here is frayed quite a bit. My first pair that I had, the sole wore through so quickly, they needed resoling, yeah, within like a, the first month I think. I just don't think they are a shoe that is going to age very well. I can imagine, give it another year or so, these are going to look quite tired. So that kind of leads into the quality versus the price. I... For me, personally, I wouldn't maybe recommend them for someone who's looking for a shoe that's really, like of this nature, that's really going to stand the test of time. I feel like my opinions on these sandals are really divided I feel. There are now so many alternatives to this sandal as well so I think if you're looking for this style of sandal and it isn't the Chanel logo that you want like my sort of naiveness wanted at the time just go with the other alternatives. There's some very very cool nice sleek chic minimal versions of these that I think are nicer essentially. But because I've paid the price and I do really love them, I will hold on to them and I will keep wearing them. But I am just conscious that they won't hold up as well as I kind of want them to. Right, so last in the, the good category are the Dr. Martin 1461 Mono. I think these are probably one of the most asked about shoes ever. People ask about them all the time. So there you have it, 1461 Mono. They are £110. I'm pretty sure they're 110 if not maybe 100 So your standard kind of Dr. Martin price. These are different. I've got these really awkwardly. <laughs> these are different to the regular DMs in that they have an almond toe shape, almond shaped toe, sorry, and the stitching is black, it is not yellow, hence why they are called mono. You can also get them in all white as well, I believe. And obviously the sole is black as well. It isn't the kind of brown gum sole that we know Dr. Martin's for. When did I buy these? I bought these in May 2019. So I've only had them for a year. I feel like I've had them way longer than a year, but I think it's because I've worn them so much that I feel like I've had them for so long. Comfort wise with DMs, it is just, a rite of passage that you will have to go through a very brutal in breaking period with Dr. Martins. That is just the way it is with their shoes. Not everyone will experience that, but I have just found in the past with all Dr. Martins there is a kind of like week of breaking them in in which you just have to power through. There will be lots of wearing them with socks around the house. There will be lots of blister plasters, <laughs> but once you get through to the other side, it's so, so worth it. I cannot tell you how brilliant these shoes are in, t in s on so many levels, but if we're talking comfort level, now that they are broken in, I would, I don't think I could ever part with these. Like, I love them so, so much. I went down a whole size in them, by the way, to a UK four. Styling wise, I feel like I don't need to say much about them because they are featured so heavily within my content that it's quite plain to see that they are very easy to style. The only way I don't wear them is, I don't really wear them with dresses. I see some girls wear them with like, in a kind of like a cool 90s way with like short floral dresses and socks. But I feel like at my age, I mean, that's not really my style anyway, but at my age, I'm like, mm, I don't think that's, yeah. It's not, it's a no from me. But I, I love it when I see people wearing them like that. So that's the, I guess the only place I've maybe struggled is incorporating them into a more summery outfit. I have worn them with shorts. I will insert a picture here now because I've worn them with, oh yes, I remember. I wore them with some black Arquette shorts and a very nice Margaret Howell jumper. So yeah, that, that's how I wear them in the summer. Longevity 
in terms of surpassing the trends. I don't even think there even is a trend for these shoes to surpass. They're Dr. Martins. They've been around since, um, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know when Dr. Martins started. Look at them. They are a black lace-up Oxford shoe. These, oh, <laughs> these ain't going anywhere. You know, like these are always going to be in my wardrobe. Some variation of this style of shoe has always been in my wardrobe. So yeah, very, very confident in their longevity in both surpassing trends and quality. I mean, I used to wear Dr. Martens to school when I was at high school and they're just in indestructible, literally indestructible. Quality versus price, if anything, I think Dr. Martens are undercharging because when I compare these to, I mean, I can't compare them to a sandal really, but in terms of quality versus price, when I compare these to the Chanel, I feel like these are gonna outrun the Chanel shoes easily. So yeah, maybe now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, maybe the Chanel shoes shouldn't have been in the good category. They should have been in the okay. Mm. Okay, now we move on to the this is the okay slash bad category. It's the category where I'm like, those shoes were all right, but they weren't, they weren't the best investment. Starting with Prada. So these are the, I think they're called the Monolith Derby shoe. Um, oh my God, I've noticed already a flaw. Great start. Ordered these in, when did I buy these? Let's scroll back and have a look on Instagram. Okay, December. December just gone. Price, seven, 705. I went down a size by a half size. No, a whole, was it a whole or a half? Why is there no details in this shoe? I think I went down, no, I went down a whole size. I find that's like the general consensus with Italian shoes. Okay. Why? Why did I buy these? Um, because I thought they looked badass and cool and no. I saw them on the runway and I really, really liked how they were styled. They were styled with like some real slick, cool tailored trousers, like proper preppy. Just, I loved it absolutely loved it and I thought yeah I I want a piece of that comfort wise these are heavy they're so heavy oh they're really do you know what I didn't have any blisters I will say that I did not have any blisters and I think that is partly because I was prepped I had blister plasters on before these even arrived I was like, I am not letting these ruin my heels. So I put blister plasters on immediately and have had no issues with them and can now wear them without blister plasters. I've, it's just that back bit of leather that just needs breaking in a bit. I feel like a clown when I wear them because they're heavy. I feel like my feet look massive in them and I feel like I can't bend my feet. They are weighty. Like, I know I said the Ginza, not the Ginza, I know I said the Rogue Eye sandals are weighty. They're nothing. These, these are heavy. These are a heavy, heavy shoe and you feel it when you walk in them. They don't, they do bend a little bit, a tiny bit, but not much. I just feel like when I'm walking in them, I'm just going, like I'm not getting any, like I can't do that on the floor. I'm just like, do, do, do. and I'm really, really conscious of myself when I'm wearing them which is sad because I'll, I'll kind of put them on and be like, yeah, I look cool, I look cool. And then I'll go out in the house in them and I'm just like, do, 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 do. And I'm just like, these aren't, I, it's like they're not making me feel comfortable and then in turn I'm like, they don't feel comfortable on my feet. But then any time I'm out in them, someone will be like, oh, they're cool. Like, I really like your shoes. And I'm like, you have no idea how stupid I feel in them. So comfort conflicted, you ain't, well, I didn't get blisters and haven't found them painful, but have found them to be quite an odd walking experience. Styling. I 
found them really difficult to style and I think that goes back to like thinking that my feet look really massive in them. So I'm five foot three and I've got quite a petite frame so I do have to be careful with proportions, I often have to like balance things out and I can't seem to balance these out very well. The only way I can kind of like make them work is by wearing a kind of like a slim trouser and then a boxy top. So the best way I've found to make them work for me is by wearing like a blazer and then like a cigarette trouser or like a straight leg jean and then these. They don't seem to quite work with, because I was thinking, oh, they look quite cool with like dresses, like big dresses, but they don't because the dresses are big and then my feet are big. It's like I can't, I just, I found them really difficult to style and I was really, really gutted because they're cool. Like I, I think the concept of them is cool. I just, I just feel a bit self-conscious in them. I think that's what it is. And I feel like they aren't proportionate to the rest of my body. And I have to work really hard not to make myself look bottom heavy when I've got them on. And I've seen other people wearing them, but they're like five, six or over. And they, their height kind of balances them out. But because I'm so short, it, it just, yeah. It's, it, it didn't work the way I wanted it to work. So styling wise, not so easy. Longevity in terms of surpassing the trends. I don't wanna part with them just yet, but I am anticipating that I will part with them. That makes me sad, but I think everyone makes mistakes. We all make mistakes. Um, and that's the point of this video, to let you know what mistakes I've made and <laughs> which ones I didn't. I'm gonna keep them and see how I feel about them in the winter. See how I can, just, I'm just gonna see. Give them another chance. I might be pleasantly surprised. Quality though, wow. I mean, <laughs> indestructible. The, the leather's beautiful, the detail's beautiful, the stitching is exquisite, the sole is incredible. These feel like an indestructible pair of shoes. However, just as I was pulling them out of the box, I've just noticed that, is it done on this one as well? No. I've just noticed this bit here, the leather is pulling away from the sole. Oh my God. Yeah, I can almost see like down, I can see the glue all like coming undone. So that's not good. 705, you know, it is expensive. And for something that I don't, you know, I didn't wear a lot last winter and I don't know if I will wear much this winter. Mm. I, I think that this was an okay purchase. Segwaying on to another okay purchase is the 80s Ortega boots. So these come in at 390. Oh, I haven't cleaned them since I went to since I last wore them to the beach. Gross, I'm gonna clean these after this video. Oh gosh, these are heavy as well. <laughs> Struggling to keep them lifted. True to size? Nope, I went down. Maybe I'm just size 37 and I'm not actually size 38. Because every single shoe I've gone down a size. Anyway, I bought these last winter. Yeah, is that what I've written? Yeah, last winter. And I bought them because I basically wanted a pair of indestructible boots. And I wanted something that I could literally stomp around in, you know, snow, mud, puddles, and be okay. So I decided to buy these. They've got like a, a chiseled square toe, very chunky sole. They are cool. They are very cool. And I love, I, I quite like boots that are really skinny on the ankle and then chunky on the bottom. I'm actually struggling to keep them held up, so I might just hold one up. <laughs> Comfort wise, I had problems. Of course I had problems. They gave me blisters for a couple of days and they're heavy. And I'm now learning that maybe I just need to stop buying heavy shoes. 
so there was that there was that whole like getting used to walking in them because they again i literally felt like my feet were huge but once broken in they are cool like they they're fine really really good i'm just i'm not sure on the shape of them if i'm honest i don't know if these are dating already i feel like they're a bit dated already i don't know there's just something about them where i look at them and i'm like i don't know if it's the square toe maybe if it was a rounded toe i might feel differently or maybe they're just a bit too chunky but i'm kind of falling out of love with them styling is so so it is it's not hard i haven't found it hard to style them but again it kind of goes back to my frame and my height i have to be careful they look really good again with like a slim straight kind of cigarette trouser they look really good with yeah like tailored trousers but if i put them with anything too wide it does it does something to my proportions and makes me look really short and stumpy and it's not they yeah they can be quite unflattering if you're not careful so it's like keep keep the legs slim and then play with proportions on your upper body to make these work in terms of the longevity of them quality the quality is really good really really good very robust boot um, the leather's beautiful the only thing is is I don't, the only thing I don't like is how much the leather has creased already, but that's kind of unavoidable and that's just one of those weird things that I don't like. I don't like it when leather creases. I like it when leather's all smooth and looks nice and new, which is why I kind of like stuff everything. So I'm like, no, you will not crease. But it, that's unavoidable really, isn't it? Especially when you wear something so often. So yeah, be like a beautifully crafted shoe. I do really think that they would last you like they really would it's just whether they would kind of surpass the trends and the seasons and whether you would feel like like maybe what i'm trying to say is that they're not classic are they when you look at them you're not like oh that's a classic boot but if they were a rounded toe and slightly less chunky maybe a bit more classic um in terms of the quality versus the price i do think they are on par. I do think they are priced quite well. Maybe could come a bit lower, you know, like slightly closer to 300 rather than 400. But I I didn't turn my nose up at that price. So I wasn't like, oh God. I was like, okay, yeah, they're like a, a very premium boot. They are a premium brand. Um, their shoes are all very chunky and good quality. Right, I've got three more shoes to talk about. I don't know what length this video is at already. We're probably at an hour, but like I said, I love a long video. Long videos are my thing. Sorry, two more pairs, not not three, two. Right. <laughs> next up, I'm laughing because uh, next up is Burberry, and I'm laughing because I just I don't know, oh, I don't even know what I'm gonna say about these shoes. These are called the Alanis. T-bar. I mean, what was I thinking? This is a prime example of me getting caught up in something that I'm seeing online and feeling like I need to be part of it or I need it. That happened with these shoes. Ugh. Price is 520. I bought them last summer and I can't tell you why. I mean, I just tried to then, it's just... Do you know what? I love these shoes, but I love to hate them. I hate to love them. I can't decide. Do you know what, actually, they remind me of? And if you live in the UK or, you know, if you've watched uh, UK Love Island, you will know what I mean by this term. But I basically got the ick I was like, these are so cool, like I can make these work for my style, they're actually really classic. And then one day I woke up and I had the ick and I was like, but then I'll see someone wearing them and I'm like, 
oh I love them I really love them and I'll get them back out and I'll put them back on and then I'm like no I don't I don't, I don't love these shoes they're <sighs> like <laughs> the fact that I just don't even know what to say because I can't let's just right okay let's let's talk let's talk properly comfort fine no blisters whatsoever great amount of bend so like yeah they're great they're in terms of comfort they're really really good a little bit slippery because the soles um are those really smooth ones styling wise yeah relatively difficult it's you can only really wear them with well no you can wear them with whatever you want but i had to be really careful that i didn't look like a toddler whilst wearing them and all it takes is the wrong dress or a, the wrong skirt and you do look like a toddler in them i don't know if i will wear them again i'm gonna put one on now and just see how i feel about it God's sake. Like sometimes I put them on and I'm like, oh I like you again, I like you, but then I see photos of myself in them or I see photos of a bad outfit. I don't like them. Right, okay. So styling, not so easy. Longevity in terms of surpassing the trends, I don't think they have any longevity whatsoever. I don't think you will see me wearing these much in the future. As you can tell, I'm very conflicted about them. I I'm staring at them now thinking I love them and I need to try styling with them with some other things but at the same time I'm just thinking why why put in the effort why really kind of like over exert yourself trying to make something work if it's not just slipping in this is what I meant by the Ginza sandals like yes they are of a certain aesthetic but I have not even had to think about how to style them these racking my brain sometimes just like just pulling things out of my wardrobe, just like trying anything, like come on, something's got to work. So when that happens, although eventually I do make them work, I just don't think that that amount of time and energy should be put into like a pair of shoes, like trying to make a pair of shoes work basically. So on that front, longevity, I do not think that they are a classic that will surpass the trends. Quality, really, really nice, but I did see some people had a few problems with the buckle last summer on theirs, but I didn't wear mine enough to experience those problems. Quality versus price though, yeah. I think like £500 for these shoes, yeah, I can I can see why. They're like, they are very beautifully crafted. The um, There's some really nice details on them, like the contrast stitching is really nice. There's a really nice like cotton trim all around the outside. So... That detail is very, very nice. These were not a good purchase. And then my final one, which was for me an absolute flop. I'd say that these were, yeah, let's say these were a flop as well. They weren't, they weren't a good purchase. And lastly, beloved La Mer. Now, last year I decided to treat myself to a pair of shoes from La Mer, my first pair of shoes. And um, I can probably safely say my only pair of shoes from the brand. I was sadly really underwhelmed by them. Quality just wasn't there for me within about two. I'm not going to go into full detail about these shoes, by the way, because they're just an absolute no from me. I don't, there's no point in me going into styling or anything like that because just across the board, they were a no. But I just want to touch on just how like disappointed I was with the quality because within about two weeks, the soles had were just, yeah, they're, they're so worn through. That the front is pretty much ruined. I should have had these resold before I even bought them, which really bugs me when that happens with shoes. The leather's beautiful. I'm not going to deny that the the leather is very very nice, but it's the kind of leather that really warps to your foot shape because it's very very thin. It's uh, very delicate. So within a couple of wears, it was like moulding to the shape of my toes, and you could see like the whole shape of my foot when I wore them, and I don't like that. I don't want to be able to see my foot through the leather. I just didn't like that at all. And I just found they looked tired and worn in very quickly. And I get it, like, you wear a pair of shoes, they're going to get some wear. But I just didn't 
like how quickly these looked worn in. So a very regretful purchase, unfortunately. Just get a bit more of a, a look at them. Yeah, just um, a no from me. That's it. I have covered all the shoes that I wanted to cover in that video. I probably could have added some more in, but um, I'll, I'll do like a separate one for trainers, I think, because I could do a whole thing on trainers. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know. Oh dear. Let me know what you thought. If I, if there's anything that you think I missed out, any crucial bits that I should have included, anything that I shouldn't have mentioned, you know, anything that wasn't that helpful. Yeah, just general feedback on this style of video, video would be great. I like I said, would really like to continue doing this as a series each week alongside a vlog a week as well. And if this gets a good reaction and people find it useful, next week I want to do handbags because I've got a lot of bags that, and I've got a lot of good bags and I've got a lot of bad bags. So yes, let me know your thoughts. I'm really looking forward to reading all the feedback on this video and I shall see you all next week.